Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. Um, I'm here to share with you three valuable lessons that I have learned by my solo travels. First, listen to yourself. So the very first time I traveled alone, uh, it wasn't my first choice. I don't think it was a choice at all, really. Um, I was looking for companions because I just finished college and I wanted to explore. And I was quickly finding out that most people don't have the time, the money, and the inclination at that exact same instant. Luckily, instead of ditching the whole plan in frustration, as I was tempted to do, uh, I decided to swallow my reservations, paint a vaguely safe-sounding picture to my parents, and I took off. So fast forward, and after a familiar start uh, with friends, I boarded a train uh, to my first destination. So I step out, and uh, here I am in this loud, busy city with no sort of clue at all. And it struck me that this was the very first time in my life, perhaps, that uh, I was truly alone and uh, left to my own devices. You see, back home, uh, every public activity is performed with company, whether it's going for a movie, catching a meal, um, walking down the street. You don't want to look like a loser who doesn't have friends. Do yourself a favor. Go be a loser. Turn the idea of loserliness on its head. Because when you step away from your uh, comfortable understanding of the world, you step into a whole new universe of possibilities. You almost step into a new personhood. But the funny thing is that this new person that you feel like, or this new environment you're in, they're not really new at all. They are your own, they are possibilities of your very own potential. It's important to get out, and it's important to do it alone. A little exercise, now I'm going to ask you to humor me and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself in a big, bustling city uh, with nothing but a 10 kilo pack to your name. Um, strange people all around. Strange, incomprehensible language being spoken. And you have no sense of direction. It gets your heart beating a little faster, doesn't it? OK, congratulations. Open your eyes. You are n I can now introduce you to yourself. It's a shy, um, soft-spoken self of yours who thus far has never managed to get your attention. Because back home, the, over the din of what everybody has to say about who you are, you've never been able to hear yourself. So in the silence that seems deafening at first, until it slowly settles down into a sort of comfortable background score to your life as a solo voyager, you will start to get to know yourself. You will um, start to really listen to the amazing things that you have to say. Um, in, that, in that process, your shy self starts to tell you who you are, what you believe in, and uh, how you really feel. That's one of the most important things you can do for yourself, is to get in touch with what you really feel. So traveling alone, one of the first lessons that it taught me was to, that's a little drawing I made, <laughs> of listening to yourself. Second, trust in your own judgment. Now I'm going to tell you a story about hitchhiking. I was, I was backpacking, uh, and I had been hitchhiking for a little bit at this point, and um, this one particular story that I'm going to talk about is uh, I, was, I was on a road in Poland. I had reached as far as this sort of empty highway, typically based on my experience, being a brown girl who's a rarity in that kind of uh, space. It usually takes me about 15, 20 minutes max to get picked up by, by somebody who's driving by. 
Uh, on this particular afternoon, it was about 4 p.m., beautiful breezy day. I've found a ride till this place where I was dropped off, which is a sparsely populated highway, like I said. So blue skies, golden fields, and one of the things I started to enjoy about hitchhiking was making eye contact with every driver who passes by. So in that split second, there's human communication that happens, right? So there are people uh, giving me looks that range from, I wish I could help you to um, get out of my face or to, um, you know, <laughs> you strange, crazy person. So um, I really enjoyed that. And I was, and th there are a variety of kinds of drivers, right? There's alone people, there's couples who are arguing, families on vacation, tired truckies. And I was feeling love for each of them. And then something magical happened. So while I was noticing that, that it had been two and a half hours that I'd been standing in that spot, and I told you like I'd learned to expect 15 minutes to be picked up. Now, two and a half hours has passed by. Dusk is quick approaching. Cause for anxiety, I think. But uh, in, that, in that moment, I, I think it's called being in the moment. But I really felt free. I felt freer than I've ever felt before. All my absolute essentials were in a small pack on my back. Forget about that. I don't even care. My money and passport in a money belt around my waist. Take that too, I don't care. In fact, I really felt like even my body was not my own to protect. So imagine the feeling of weightlessness, belongingness, fearlessness. At that time, that, uh, on that lonely highway in a strange land where I didn't speak any of the languages that they do, I felt safe. So in that moment of belongings losing their meaning was when I felt that the whole world belonged to me and I belong to the world. This sense of connection in the present moment is as superb as it is rare. So um, Virginia Satir says, I am me and I'm okay. So when you, that, that's the feeling that really drives this um, feel, sense of being in the moment. So when you drag your belongings across multitude of cities with meeting many different people, navigating through complex situations, you start to realize what a great friend you have in yourself. So you got you this far, didn't you? So then you want to hang around more with yourself, you want to catch a drink with yourself, you want to crack a joke with yourself, move in with yourself, but you did. So lucky you. My point is that you rely on you. This is the best gift anyone can ever give you, self-dependence. The confidence that you won't let you down. You are capable, you are knowledgeable, and better equipped than anyone else to lead your life. So that was so, sort of a visual of the Polish highway. So then now you've listened to yourself. You have um, built a carefully developed relationship of trust with yourself. And now you're ready to take the plunge and act on your beliefs. No, not marry yourself. You're ready to act on your beliefs. So this is my first experience hitchhiking. Um, I was going from Poland to the Czech Republic. I was finding, no, fr from Poland to Latvia. And I, was, I made myself a sign like they told me to. And then I went and stood on the highway. At first I got honked at because I'm obstructing traffic, okay. So I scooch across a little further. And within seconds, there's this car that's turned up. And I'm like, wow, that was easy. So I open the door and uh, excitedly look at my would-be you know, driver's face. And he's like, fuck. So I'm looking. I'm like, wait, my sign says Riga, right? So sure enough, it did. So I was like, no, excuse me, Riga. So he's like, want to fuck? Close the door. And my heart is beating fast at this point. He races away. Not a very um, superb start to this new adventure. 15 minutes later or so, this monstrous truck pulls over. You can understand why I was a little apprehensive. He's pulled over a little beyond where I'm at. And I'm wondering, and then the driver motions to me, so I run over. Believe me when I say monstrous, it takes me like four steps to climb into the damn thing. So I've climbed in with my backpack and I settle down, and I look over to see um, 
who my driver is. He is this big guy, this guy. <laughs> so he's a big guy, tattooed, bald, friendly. His name is Pietro. He speaks Russian, Polish, Latvian, and a smattering of uh, Italian. I'm Vidya, and I speak Konkani, Hindi, Kannada, and English. And a little bit of German and Spanish, but none of them were to be of use, right? So uh, I'm guessing the conversation's not really going to be deep on this long journey. But Pietro tries. To his credit, he says, uh, all man, my brother, tolerance. And I'm like, OK, good, good. He said Bob Marley, too. I don't know what he said about him. So I'm like, great, great, great. We're on the same wavelength here. And then until he, he said, um, racismos, bam. So I was like, OK, OK. So he, he's not very tolerant of racists. Then he says, uh, intolerance, bam, bam. So I'm thinking, OK, not my approach, but we seem to be on the same page as far as equality goes, right? So um, I'm like nodding along. OK, same page, same page. Until he says, uh, homosexuals, bam, bam. <laughs> At this point, I freeze. Uh, at this point, I freeze, and there's a montage, like a movie style, that goes on in my head. And I think of my happy childhood, and my family and friends, the superb trip I've had so far. And um, I do some quick mental arithmetic, and I've arrived at a conclusion. I'm going to go for it. So I'm like, Pietro, I'm bisexual. Silence. His eyes widen. I almost feel the truck slowing down. And he looks at me and says, no. <laughs> Bisexual? You? And I nod. And I show him my rainbow-colored wristband. And there's like what seems like an eternity. It was two seconds, I guess. And uh, he throws his head back and he laughs. Moment of tension passed. <laughs> Uh, so the next time we pull over to take a coffee break, Pietro's uh, pulled out his computer, very advanced, from his Mercedes truck. He pulls out his computer, he starts a translation app, and uh, I see the words, good drive so far, popping out at me. So I'm excited at this ability to finally communicate with him. So um, I type back, Pietro, you're a good man, even though you dislike homosexuals. So. His response is, as quick as it's cheeky, he says, Vidya, you're a very nice lady, and I forgive you for being bisexual. <laughs> in that time, the point of my story is, in, in that exchange that we had, I was afraid. I took a risk. And um, I feel at the end of it, we had both opened ourselves just a little bit more to each other's worlds than we did before we met. That was what I wanted to share, and I want to say that I believe in love. I believe in the richness of human connection, and I believe in taking the risks to establish them. I want to tell you to get uncomfortable. Meet people who stretch the limits of your beliefs. Put yourself in places and situations that are outside your comfort zone. Um, there is no... There's no time to be fearful and to procrastinate. So get your growth by hearing other people's stories without judgment, sharing your own without holding back. OK. So to go over once more, these are the three life lessons that Traveling Alone taught me to listen to myself, to um, trust in my own judgment, and then to take the plunge and take a risk and act on your belief. So now am I done one trip solo and uh, I'm sorted? I can live happily ever after? Of course not. I have to do it again and again. If it hasn't struck you already, this talk is not just about traveling solo on a short vacation. What is that one grand journey you're going to make, the longest solo adventure? Why, it's life itself. So um, a life seeking security, avoiding risk, uh, being fearful, or denying your fears, is life lived in a bubble. 
It's one way to live, but certainly not the only way. Who is that who said, uh, a ship in a harbor is always safe? But that's not what ships were built for. So remember that you have the choice. You always have the choice. You may choose to live the tried and tested, stay safe, be comfortable. And that's one way of living. It's a valid way of living. But also know that you have the choice to question, to explore, to go seeking. And nobody can hold you back from doing that. So you need not accept somebody else's script for your own life. I'm going to move to this Dr. Seuss quote. It says, you have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you're the one who will decide where to go. To seek yourself, you have to stop hiding. You have to come out of your protective shell, stand out in the sunlight, and really open yourself up. Then watch as pure joy streams forth from and towards you. Thank you.